All right, it is 630. We will go ahead and I will call this meeting to order. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, the flag to the flag of the United, the United States, States of America, of America. And, and to the Republic, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and justice for all. For all. Um, before calling the roll tonight, I would like to uh, take a moment of silence for the City of St. Louis Police Officer Tamaris Bohannon, who was tragically killed last weekend while responding to an active shooter call. Um, he leaves behind a wife, children, beloved colleagues, and lots of friends and family. So please join me in a moment of silence for Tamaris Bohannon. Please call the roll. Council Member Days. Here. Council Member Dunaway. Yes. Present. Thank you. Council Member Fitch. Here. Council Member Gray. Present. Council Member Clancy. Here. Council Member Trakis. Present. Council Member Harder. Present. Madam Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you. Is there a motion for approval of the journal of the meeting of August 18th, 2020? So moved. Second. Days. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. The August 18th, 2020 journal is approved. Is there a motion for approval of the journal of the meeting of August 25th, 2020? So moved. Sarah Second Second. James. <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. The Aye. August the August twenty fifth, twenty twenty journal is approved. We have no bid openings this evening, so we will move to communications. Madam Chair, we have no. Let's see. X compromises, zoning matters, or road and bridge matters. So we'll move to other communications. Under other communications, item number one, fourth district. Receive, file, vote on the order of business. So ordered. Item number two. Receive, file, and the county counselor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation, and that will be the order. Item number three. Receive, file, and the issuance of a request for proposal be approved as requested. Second, Councilwoman Gray. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Item number four, third district. Receive, file, and the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number five, all districts. Receive file and the appropriation transfer be approved as requested. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number six, all districts. Receive file and the appropriation transfer be approved as requested. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number seven. Um, receive file and hold on the order of business and that will be the order. Item number eight. Receive file and the county counselor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation and that will be the order. Item number nine. Receive file and the county counselor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation and that will be the order. Item number 10, second district. 
Not going to make it easy for you guys tonight. Um, the ACC had two open bed positions for 10 months, um, getting by on a series of emergency contracts. At the beginning of this year, an RFP was out for six weeks for veterinary services, uh, and it was reissued on ju June 30th after being unsuccessful. The contract right here on item number 10 tonight is the result of the single bidder of that RFP. DPH reached out earlier today and we discussed the whole patchwork of veterinary services that make up the ACC. Um, and so we are going to go back and look at a couple of things um, and work out a few more details. And so for tonight, we will receive and file. So ordered. Item number 11, 5th District. Um, receive file and the county counselor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation and that will be the order. Item number 12. Receive file and the county counselor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation and that will be the order. Item number 13, 7th District. Receive file and the county counselor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number 14. Um, receive file, hold on the order of business and refer to the council as a committee of the whole and that will be the order. Item number 15. Um, receive file and hold on the order of business and that will be the order. Uh, please read the add-ons. Under other communications, item number one, fifth district. Receive file and the council will meet as a committee of the whole in closed session on September 3rd, 2020 at 3 p.m. pursuant to RSMO 610.020 subsection 1 and subsection 17 and sections 114.020 subsection 1 and subsection 17 of St. Louis County Revised Ordinances. This is pertaining to um, the state audit and the council's need to um, complete the preparation of our management response. Um, is there a second? Second. 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 Roll call. Council Member Days. Aye. I apologize. That's okay. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, on the motion to go into closed session on September 3rd, 2020, there are seven ayes. Motion carries. Um, moving on, report of the County Executive. Thank you, Lisa, and good evening, everyone. Yesterday, I shared with the media more details on what we've been seeing in COVID-19 cases involving children and teenagers, and how we plan to help county schools, both public and private, make the best possible decisions about their students' education. Working closely with school districts, our health department is assembling a set of data points for districts and private schools to use as they work toward a possible return to in-school instructors. At the end of this week, we should be able to share the following points of data with all our schools. All new cases will be shown on our data dashboard on stlcorona.com, grouped into zip codes and placed within school district boundaries. Our biweekly indicators report, the next one coming out on Friday, will add a new cases per day indicator. We will also offer expanded youth data on that report, including new cases and testing positivity rate for ages zero to five, five to nine, 10 to 14 and 15 to 19 two-week zip code trends for all youth cases, cases and contact interview information from schools and school-related activities, and this will help identify trends in cases. With schools underway in various forms, it's important to provide this level of information so educators across the county can make decisions on how school will look the remainder of this year and into 2021. So far, 
Even with limited school openings, there have been 75 COVID-19 cases associated with schools. In public schools where learning is mostly virtual, most of the cases are among staff, 26 staff and seven students. In private schools where most of the learning is in person, most of the cases are among students, 39 students and three staff. We have already observed secondary transmission, meaning that students have transmitted the virus to other students. In all, about 40 schools in our county this month have reported either a positive case or a close contact of a case, such as a parent or another person in the household, with increasing reports as August progresses. Reports of school-related cases paired with the high incidence of cases in the county overall, about 200 new cases per day, is all concerning. While the rate of new cases among 15 to 19 year olds has risen sharply over the past two months, the rate of cases among younger children has remained relatively stable. For that reason, we expect that we will be able to recommend a return to in-person learning among younger students first, although we do not have a specific time in mind. We will continue reviewing cases and sharing more detailed information with the public through stlcorona.com and through my regular media briefings. And any changes made will be done in communication with our schools. We continue working closely with superintendents as the new school year gets underway to see what challenges continue and what, if any, changes can be made to make our students, teachers, and staff safer during this unprecedented time. Again, we urge everyone in St. Louis County to maintain social distancing, wear masks, and practice hand washing. And we urge anyone with regular contact with people outside the household to get a test. You can make a reservation for a test at no cost by visiting stlcorona.com or calling the health department at 314-615-0574. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Dr. Page. Um, report of special committees. Receive file and the report dated August 25th, 2020 be adopted as submitted. Second days. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, moving on to public forum. Um, reminder that we are very proud of our public forum here in St. Louis County government, and we know that this can serve as a positive example to residents and other policy making bodies in our community. Um, with that, we encourage everyone to speak with respect and tolerance towards each other towards the council and towards other leaders in county government. Um, as a reminder of our rules, only comments sent to council comments at stlouisco.com on the day in which the meeting is being held at least one hour prior to the meeting will be recorded into the public record. The email must contain the commenter's name. The message must be 400 words or less, which is the equivalent of three minutes of verbal communication, which is what we would typically allow during in-person meetings. Um, during the public forum, the administrative director or a designee will read the comment into the record um, and it will be recorded into the journal. So with that, please read the first comment. Madam Chair, we have 38 written public comments this evening. Our first is from Dale Shutter. I am a volunteer at the St. Louis County Animal Shelter and serve on the Animal Care and Control Advisory Board. As I write this, I realize the request from County Executive Sam Page regarding issuing the necessary legislative action to authorize a contract with Dr. Phil Wagoneck for veterinary services has already been voted on. I hope you did the right thing and voted against this request. Had I had an opportunity to speak to you before the vote, I would have implored you to not move forward with this legislation. Dr. Wagoneck has been put on probation twice by the Missouri Vet Board for a period of one year on 12-12-1996 to 12-12-1997, and again on 1-14-1999 to 1-14-2000. It is rare that a vet is put on probation once, let alone twice. He currently has two active lawsuits against him, one as a named defendant in a suit against St. Louis County. In 2018, when Dr. Wagoneck was performing spay-neuter for the shelter, our complication rate hovered around 60%. Just recently, he performed an amputation on a dog's tail that ended up having complications and was deemed rescue only 
due to the issues from this poorly done procedure. And when a cat recently had off-color skin, Dr. Wagoneck refused to do any blood work. The adopters took home a sick cat, and they now must pay for proper vetting. Vets I have spoken with have serious concerns about the level of care this man can provide. Dr. Wagoneck is not the person to be providing quality medical care, as stated in Dr. Page's request. With all the issues the shelter has had over the last few years and are starting to overcome, do we really want to add this to the list? These animals have already been dealt a bad hand due the, to the human mistreatment. Do they need to suffer further? From Anna Crafton to Beth Orwick and Ernie Trakis. Thank you. From Libby Wilkinson. America is an amazing place where states and counties are free to govern differently. And in doing so, we are able to assess what is effective and what is not. Citizens are free to vote with their feet and go to the successful states and counties. I ask you to stand back and take in a bigger perspective of how St. Louis County is doing and where we must improve in how we are handling COVID. The excessive restrictiveness and government controls in St. Louis County are hurting our county right now. It is difficult to measure at this moment, but history will show the role this county council had in the demise of St. Louis County. You are destroying the tax base right now in the unnecessary regulations you have imposed on businesses. Parents are voting with their feet and going elsewhere, and this is glaring when it comes to youth sports. You are driving them out of St. Louis, and they are taking their kids and wallets elsewhere to do what people are made to do, live. Stop the insanity, listen to the science, and fully open youth sports. You are shutting down youth sports as having a direct effect on the emotional health of our kids. So when you hear the suicide and self-harm numbers come out in a couple months, ask yourself, did my vote contribute to that or did it help prevent it? Each one of you has a responsibility. From Katie Geary, this request is for you to end the countywide mandate to wear masks, to lift capacity limits, and end social distancing orders. We as rational, logical adult citizens can decide for ourselves appropriate actions to take to keep ourselves and our community healthy. This virus has caused the death of 0.07% of people in our county. While each person lost is a tragedy, this number simply does not justify the number of mandates in place. We do not need mandates restricting our freedoms when our hospitals are not overrun and we have flattened the curve as you originally asked. Lift all mandates today and allow St. Louis County to heal from the hardships the mandates have caused. From Marsha Niekamp, this request is for you to end the countywide mandate to wear masks, to lift capacity limits, and to end the social distancing orders. We as rational, logical, educated adult citizens can decide for ourselves appropriate actions to take to keep ourselves and our community healthy. This virus has caused the death of 0.07% of our county and nationwide only 6% of deaths listed as COVID were actual COVID deaths. 94% of deaths had two or more comorbidities. While each person lost is a tragedy, this num number simply does not justify this type of mandate you've put in place. We do not need mandates restricting our freedoms when our hospitals are not overrun and many hospital staff have been laid off or terminated. The curve was flattened months ago and you see the data clearly showing this. Our children are suffering the most. Public school children cannot go back to school, and many are battling depression and anxiety from their lives being stripped away. E-learning has been a complete disaster, and their education has already fallen behind. You are clearly bullying the private and Christian schools who decided to open against your recommendations and have waged war against those children. You've made their lives miserable, dictating how they are to eat with masks on. You change the rules midday, anytime you see fit, with zero data to back any of your mandates. You've taken their sports and activities away. You are punishing our children and taking every aspect of their lives that is good away. Depression has skyrocketed, skyrocketed, and my children and their friends 
are all battling it. My daughter's best friend is now suicidal. This is what you are doing to our children. There is no data to back up any of these mandates. We've asked for it and you can't produce any. Local physicians have begged you to reconsider the mandates and to open the schools. Our businesses are suffering greatly and many are dying. You are destroying our economy. I can no longer go in any business in St. Louis, nor go to the grocery store to get food for my family because of your mandates and threats to businesses. I have a medical exemption letter from my doctor that businesses are afraid to accept. Businesses and schools both are violating ADA because of your threats. This has got to stop, and that's 400 words. The following from Jennifer Reiser. It is past time to lift all mandates and allow St. Louis County to heal from the hardships these mandates have caused. The St. Louis County wide mandate to wear masks needs to end. The capacity limits inside and outside need to end. The social distancing orders need to end. We as rational, logical, educated adult citizens can decide for ourselves appropriate actions to, to take to keep ourselves, our children, and our community healthy. This virus has caused the death of a very small amount of people in our county considering the population is over 328 million. Each person is lost each person lost is a tragedy. Of course, this number is simply does not justify the type of mandates in place. We do not need mandates restricting our freedoms when our hospitals are not overrun and we have flattened the curve as you originally asked. Do the right thing for the people of St. Louis County, lift these mandates. From Shannon Reed. I'm writing in regards to the proposal for the open veterinarian position at the St. Louis County Animal Care and Control. County Executive Dr. Sam Page has proposed that Dr. Philip Wickenecht, Wagenecht be considered for this position as a shelter volunteer request you to oppose this proposal. Dr. Wagenecht has been suspended twice, has an unusually high record of complications in routine spay and neuter surgeries. A routine surgery is too difficult. Many of his surgeries were considered botched, causing pain and suffering to the animals and requiring additional expensive medical treatment with costs to the shelter. Currently, he is involved in two pending lawsuits, one of in regard to a wrongful euthanasia that occurred at the shelter. I can only imagine what killing someone's beloved animal can cost. It's no wonder that among the shelter staff and volunteers, he is referred to as Dr. Death and the Butcher. I'd also like to call your attention to the close ties between Dr. Wagenknecht and the director of the shelter, Dr. Vanessa Duras. Dr. Duras' husband, Dr. Adam Duras, purchased Dr. Wagenknecht's former veterinary practice, St. Louis County Veterinary Center. It calls into question le the legitimacy of the nomination. The legitimacy is further questioned when it is noted that Dr. Wagenknecht is the only person to have replied to the request for proposal, and it is very hard to understand why he would be the only one to respond unless you wonder how many others were contacted. If the shelter staff didn't know about the RFP, then who else didn't? Taxpayers in St. Louis County would love to have a reason to add drama and bring the shelter under scrutiny. But is this what it needs? Hiring an obviously incompetent veterinarian who is beyond retirement age, whose license suspended multiple times and involved in multiple lawsuits should never have been considered. Providing inadequate veterinarian care and having botched surgeries will result in more lawsuits, which will add to rising costs. Do you think we will have more funding to cover this? His antings worth that? The citizens of St. Louis County have come to expect honesty and, and integrity from their officials and good use of their tax money, and accepting Dr. Sam Page's proposal to, to hire Dr. Wagenknecht would not accomplish any of those expectations. I ask you to pose this questionable proposal and fill the position with someone who is capable of doing the job correctly and humanely. And I had to end it there because that was over 400 words. The following from Dustin Reed. I'm a volunteer at the St. Louis County Animal Shelter. I'm extremely against the hiring of Dr. Wegenecht. I understand you, our need for veterinarian on, our, on staff, and I believe it is in great need, but please not one with so, many, so much controversy attached. Not one is accused 
not one that is accused of wrongfully euthanizing a dog, a veterinarian that has had his license suspended twice. We need someone that will care for the animals and do a good job. The last thing the shelter needs is someone to bring scrutiny and more drama. There's a lot of good things. There are a lot of good that goes on in adoptions that take place. We need someone good taking care of our pups. I strongly discourage this offering of a contract to a butcher. From Kyle Rickerman. I demand the that the children of, of the Rockwood School District return to in-person learning immediately. This political act and using our children must stop now. This virus is not the reason to mentally hurt the children from learning. Pardon me. You all that are putting your personal agenda is what is driving this decision. Please note that you are all looking like fools during this time. If you seriously think by holding kids out of in-person learning is going to get you a high rank in office, you are wrong. Think of the special needs children that have learning disabilities and are and being threatened during your incompetence. Think about how you would look, excuse me, think about how you would look during the upcoming election when you have eggs smeared in your faces, when you lose because of you mad decision making. Think about how it looks that the CDC now says that only 6% of deaths in the country was due to COVID-19. It is time for you to step back and listen to the people that know best for their children, the parents. You should feel terrible about what you have done and the mental state to the mental state of the children. Shame on you. The time is now to return the children back to school. Teachers and education deem essential. Knowing what essential mean, since I am an essential worker and having to report to work every day and still not have gotten sick, nor has any of my employees. Because you all make people feel scared to live their lives, you have set this precedent and now teachers and the teaching, teachers unions are taking advantage of, and this is wrong. Open the schools now. From Elma Garrison. Subject Rockwood Schools. The district needs to return elementary students back. They are not learning and are suffering mentally. Too much screen time, not enough learning. From Catherine Foland. I have a kindergarten son with an IEP and a teenage daughter in her senior year. Both of my children have had issues with this learning platform. I have tried everything to get my son to continue to do his Zoom classes and lessons. He is completely resistant to this way of learning and refuses to even get on Zoom now. I continue to try, but he is just unwilling to continue, resulting with a bribe to just get him to sit for at least one Zoom call after last week. We tried again yesterday with a one-on-one -on -one with a counselor, but he is still resistant. My daughter in high school has told me several times that this isn't working, insisting that her teachers aren't helping, but encourage her to watch YouTube videos to learn the materials. She asked me if she could just get her GED yesterday before 11 a.m. I don't understand why we have sports being played. We can walk into the school anytime we want to fix iPad or Chromebook issues, and I can take my students to the school to get internet access and sit in a computer room but it's so dangerous to return to school. None of this makes sense. Our children and teachers are no more at risk than the rest of the general public. We walk into grocery stores every day. We can sit down at a restaurant for inside dining and several other activities. This is no worse than other viruses out there, especially some that we have faced throughout my lifetime. But instilling fear in people seems to be the new normal. How is this okay or healthy for our children who are struggling every day and hanging on by a thread in most cases? Several parents of the Rockwood School District are demanding in-person instruction for our children to thrive, and even with several of my own health concerns, I am with them because my children's concerns are more important than my own. From Laura Kaplan. I am bothered that public comment on this issue was left until after your vote. 
Community comment is greatly needed on this issue as it relates to the functioning of the animal shelter and the safety of the animals inside. I am a long-term volunteer at St. Louis County Animal Care and Control. It has recently come to my attention that a veterinary contract has been offered to Dr. Philip Wagonek. Please know that the shelter's experiences with him have been very bad. There is a history of many botched surgeries that cause the animals considerable pain from poor outcomes to infections. It is stunning that he is even being considered for a durable role in the shelter. Please vote against his contract hire. From Lynn Moeller, I'm writing to express my concern about the $200,000 contract offered to Dr. Wagonek at St. Louis County Animal Care and Control. In 2018, spay and neuter surgeries for the county shelter animals were contracted out to other facilities and veterinarians, including Dr. Wagonek. As a shelter volunteer at the time, I was to report any noticeable medical issues. I personally witnessed at least six dogs with severe complications from spay and neuter surgeries after returning from Dr. Wagonek's care. Each time I mentioned issues to the kennel staff, they replied, quote, yeah, the butcher probably did the surgery, end quote. Many animals suffered needlessly and required further procedures. Also nicknamed Dr. Death throughout the rescue community, Dr. Wagonek is so named because he is, not, he is known not to be emotionally affected by euthanizing animals. While seemingly a positive trait in some sense, how does one so devoid of feelings to have earned such a nickname also have empathy, empathy towards animals and maintain a desire to save them. In light of the current lawsuits against him, as well as the shelter's poor reputation and overall community mistrust, hiring an incompetent, twice suspended veterinarian in his 70s would not be in the best interest of St. Louis County's taxpaying citizens or the animals, and I implore you to reconsider. From Ed Golterman. As the historic museum, the libraries, and the city destroy history and city history, step forward, protect and communicate this history. Ours will go down next. Defund the distorters of history and fund the protectors. From Misty Byers, I am writing in regard to the proposal for the open veterinarian position at the St. Louis County Animal Care and Control. As a shelter volunteer, I ask that you oppose County Executive Dr. Sam Page's proposal that Dr. Philip Wagonek take the position. Dr. Wagonek had his veterinary medicine license suspended twice. During his time at St. Louis County Animal Care and Control in 2018, there was an unusually high record of complications in routine spay and neuter surgeries. Currently, Dr. Wagonek is involved in two pending lawsuits one of which is in regard to a wrongful euthanasia that occurred at the St. Louis County Animal Care and Control. I would also like to call your attention to the close ties between Dr. Wagonek and the current director of St. Louis County Animal Care and Control, Dr. Vanessa Duras. Dr. Duras's husband, Dr. Adam Duras, purchased Dr. Wagonek's former veterinary practice, St. Louis Veterinary Center. It calls into question the legitimacy of the nomination. The legitimacy is further questioned when it is noted that Dr. Wagonek is the only person to have applied to the request for proposal. It's extremely hard to believe that he is the only candidate who replied to the offer, especially when there are reports that shelter staff were not informed of the RFP. Many more qualified applicants should have been contacted and considered. Taxpayers in St. Louis County expect the highest possible care for animals at their shelter. Hiring an incompetent veterinarian who has had his license suspended and who is involved in multiple lawsuits should never have been considered an option. Thank you for your time. From Paula Coughlin, <clears throat> excuse me, apparently empowered by election success, Mr. Page immediately began to pressure and bully schools, both public and private, into implementing all virtual learning plans. I'm not sure how a primary election outcome resulting in 62% of your own party voting against you is empowering, but Mr. Page seems to seek 
only the support of his squad on the council and not the and not the support of constituents. You have no authority or jurisdiction or supporting scientific data allowing you to order St. Louis County schools closed, yet you succeeded with this mandate for all the public school districts. You are primarily hurting our children. The loss of learning, socialization, and emotional de development, coupled with the fact that you have taught our children that there is some reason to be afraid to go to school and be fearful of their teachers and friends will take, away year will take years and years to overcome. However, you have secondarily hurt the teachers of St. Louis County, some of your biggest supporters. By urging the teachers to refuse to teach in person, you made teachers admit that they are non-essential workers, less important to our community than a grocery store clerk or a gas station attendant selling Missouri lotto tickets. Additionally, you have created a, a huge obstacle for teachers with goals to advance the left-leaning political and social justice indoctrination that is so prevalent in the public school setting. Teachers are expressing concerns about the parents' ability to watch and listen to their children's online classes. I'm listening to them, and the parents across the country are listening too. How are teachers supposed to train the next generation of liberal thinkers with parents listening in? Come on, man. Are you really even a Democrat? Get these kids back into their training. I tuned in last Sunday to Missouri Times with Scott Vaughn, on which you appeared with the county executives of both St. Louis, St. Charles County and Jefferson County. I hope you enjoyed being schooled by the neighboring county executives on your fear mongering and on scientific actions taken to keep our schools and county closed. I know I did. It is time to stop behaving like a pandering pandemic control freak, endangering public health and sanity, and start acting like you care about the children of St. Louis County. Sincerely, Paula Coughlin. Following from Alicia Vassell. The children are suffering, the parents are suffering. We cannot keep up with virtual learning, the virtual learning path. Our family, along with many others, are prepared to unenroll and move to homeschooling if they're not given the option for in-school learning. In-school learning puts children with their peers in a conductive learning environment with their teachers, with their teachers we love so much, and most importantly, off the screens. This is not good for anyone. From Terry Deloge. Why are special needs children forced to learn virtually, a method they are incapable of utilizing? Why are school sports practices being held on school grounds, but special needs children are not, are not allowed to receive life-sustaining therapy? Most states, New York included, are allowing all special needs children to attend school. Would you like for me to bring children diagnosed with autism, cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, etc., to have a peaceful protest so that St. Louis County can see the neglect of your council? I value our teachers, but the numbers do not warrant a total shutdown of St. Louis County schools. Our children have a constitutional right to return to school. Are you aware of the 99.653% survivability of rate of COVID-19? Why are you allowing our economy in St. Louis County to tank? Everyone is driving to St. Charles and Jefferson counties for their services and goods. St. Louis County citizens and taxpayers deserve answers. Concern for our children and our country, Terry Deloge. From Janine Fabic. As a resident of St. Louis County, I would like to express my concern about any possibility of a reduction in the St. Louis County police budget for 2021. In 2017, the citizens of St. Louis County overwhelmingly approved Prop the Proposition P sales tax for public safety. These funds were to be utilized primarily for the hiring of additional law officers and increasing their compensation. Because of the vague wording of the ordinance, this sales tax is now being used to fund items which previously were part of the general fund budget. This has caused distress for accomplishing the provisions of the original ordinance. The county finance director recently indicated that there are not enough funds to pay for raises, which you agreed to in 2019, much less fund additional officers. In addition, during this budget process, you have asked for a budget with no increase, a 5% reduction, and a 10% reduction. I realize COVID is impacting the county's sales tax revenue. However, public safety is an area of services that cannot be reduced at any level for the security of our community. 
we citizens passed Prop P to hire more officers and increase their pay. And as council members, I ask you to remember what the citizens of your community are expecting of you to support, expand, and enhance our law enforcement services. There is no situation where a reduction in the 2021 budget will accomplish this. From Jessica Moran, this letter is an appeal for you to end the St. Louis County mandates such as but not limited to wearing masks, denying access, limiting capacity, and social distance restrictions. As an adult, I'm fully capable to mitigate risk for, my fam for myself and my family. While I'm not unsympathetic to those affected by COVID, I can logically deduce that the 0.07% doesn't justify the hardships placed on the other 99.3% of the population. The curve has been flattened and our hospitals are not overrun. It is time to lift the restriction and let people go back to work, go back to school, and regain the lives and freedoms that were taken from them. Thank you, Jessica Moran. From Deb Matush. Well, the cat's out of the bag, finally. I'll quote Margaret Mead, quote, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has, end quote. There's a groundswell of distrust, dissatisfaction, and more importantly, discontent. You have wrung out the citizenry with control tactics, and the citizens are restless. They are mobilizing efforts to combat social control. As more information comes forward, like this from Dr. Deborah Burks, speaking at a medical conference in Arkansas last month, quote, when people start to realize that 99% of us are going to be fine, it becomes more and more difficult to get people to comply, end quote. That's the groundswell. 99% of us are going to be fine. So in your infinite wisdom, you think the county should be run by serving the 1%. The numbers no longer support your rhetoric. Who's funding your campaign, Sam? Are you being funded like Kim Gardner? George Soros, perhaps? Teachers unions, perhaps? Once you're on the take, you'll forever be on the take. Think Stanger. In the meantime, citizens are intentionally shopping with our neighbors who trust their citizenry without fear mongering. St. Charles County, Jefferson County, Franklin County. I know I do. Wake up, Council. Citizens will not support a new tax to make up for loss of revenue due to poor leadership. And what about our schools? I have no school aged children, thank God, but I do have plenty of friends who do and have some have special needs. You must not know what that's like, but for those who do, it's gut-wrenching. You're instilling fear when as leaders you should be instilling trust. In the end, I believe this is to be true. If the people will lead, the leaders will follow. Yes, the groundswell is starting, the citizens are restless, and no longer trust you to make the best decisions for us. Hey, Sam, go back to anesthesiology. I'll gamble you're better at it. Open our county. There is no state of emergency. Rescind the state of emergency and the mask mandate. From Dina Ford, please end the St. Louis County mandates, including the wearing of masks, denying access, limiting capacities, and social distance restrictions. This is causing undue hardship on business owners and residents that are trying to earn a living to feed their families. The point of the original lockdown was to keep the hospitals from being overwhelmed. The lockdowns are causing an increase in drug use, mental health issues, domestic violence, and child abuse. The United States was built on freedom. We should be able to choose what risks we're comfortable taking in limiting our exposure to COVID without a countywide mandate. Currently, the estimated infection fatality rate is less than 1%. The country didn't shut down for the H1N1 crisis in 2009, the Hong Kong flu in 1968, or the 1957 to 1958 H1N1 2 flu. I'm sympathetic to anyone who has lost their lives this year due to COVID. I certainly recommend those at high risk to continue to stay home this virus is less dangerous than the flu for those under 24. We don't shut down schools, schools for the flu, so why are we shutting them down for COVID? 
Children need to get back in school with their peers. It is time to lift the restrictions and let freedom ring. Continued lockdowns are only going to cause more harm to county residents. From Ann Cashel. I'm inquiring about the RFP to procure a partnership for the animal care and control shelter operations to identify a nonprofit partner to manage shelter operations. What is the status? Where is the transparency? I see on the agenda tonight that it's being requested to authorize a contract with Dr. Phil Wagonack for a term of two years at $200,000 with the option to renew for an additional two-year contract. In what capacity exactly? Has he been thoroughly vetted? A letter states, quote, in response to our RFP advertisement, we received one proposal, end quote. So you automatically go with that proposal? Does this mean that you are privatizing the shelter with no input, input from taxpayers or your constituents or the community that you serve? The public and St. Louis County taxpayers should absolutely be able to view and weigh in on the proposal. When will this happen? With all of the issues at the animal shelter over the years, yes, even pre-Stanger, and bad hires, it would seem that you would want to finally involve and include the public, your constituents and taxpayers, before any decision is made. When and how will you be engaging key stakeholders? Rescues, St. Louis County residents, taxpayers, animal advocacy groups, volunteers, taxpayers, any other group who can be a voice for the animals in the community and in the shelter. I wonder, what are your goals and expectations for the animal shelter and the possibility of privatization? Is it possible the best care for our precious pets or to stop hearing complaints or to stop hearing complaints from the community when that isn't being provided? There are issues at the shelter that most likely won't go away with privatization, but can be resolved. Have any of you ever really cared enough to drill down to find the root cause of the issues? Perhaps personnel changes at the top are the answer. Who would stay and who would go if the shelter is privatized? I can tell you that as an animal advocate, St. Louis County resident, taxpayer, and volunteer, that people want and expect the best care for their pets in and out of the shelter as well as transparency and involvement. From Jeff and Julie Wilson, as citizens of St. Louis County with a child in the Rockwood District, we ask you to strongly reconsider the mask mandates you have imposed and the pressures you have placed on superintendents. Many reputable resources have stated repeatedly that children are showing to be very low risk spreaders of this virus. We are in week two of this joke of a school year and not much improvement from the first week. Massive headaches from staring at a screen all day, inability to upload documents, isolation, feelings of overwhelm to name a few. It is time to get our kids back in the classroom. Although the teachers and district are doing their best, this platform is failing our students. With such drastic requirements, we have yet to see any scientific evidence that proves the efficacy of mask wearing when worn by the general population. Studies done on mask efficacy prior to the pandemic showed inconclusive results. The studies I am referring to are true science with peer-reviewed randomized controlled studies. These studies are what you have failed to produce to support your mandates. Researchers are also seeing the negative impacts of what long-term mask wearing is doing to individuals, especially children. When making children wear masks, this has psychological and emotional ramifications on their development. Yet another concern is children who have special needs, such as autism, who cannot wear a mask on their face. The extreme pressures that have been placed on businesses and schools to adhere to these strict, unfeasible guidelines and not allow for any exceptions is inexcusable. As citizens, we need more clarity and absolution from our leaders and you, Dr. Page, are again failing to provide. Mandates do not need to be indefinite. We deserve better than that. That is why we support the passing of Bills 175 and 176 introduced by Council Members Fitch and Harder. 
As citizens, we deserve our government leadership to have more accountability to each other and all members have a say in mandates and ordinances that are set forth. Our family urges the council to vote on and pass both bills. From Stacy Washington, each week as I sit listening to the concerns of the St. Louis County residents who take the time to submit public comments, I'm struck by the sincerity of the letters, the dry way in which they are read, and the complete lack of direct response from you. Dr. Page, your utter lack of reaction and refusal to even acknowledge the concerns of certain constituents like the special needs community are an indictment upon you. Is this the way you treat your patients? My only consolation is that no one ever escapes being held accountable for his or her actions, especially those who seek out and assume leadership. A secular source that supports my claim is Success Magazine, which lists the qualities of poor leadership as lack of transparency, dismissing ideas others than your own, ego, lack of empathy, poor communication, closed-mindedness, and inconsistency. I'm sorry to say that much of that list applies to you, sir. The Bible has much to say about poor leadership as well. Proverbs 1, verse 7, say bad leaders, despite wisdom and instruction, which you demonstrate by refusing to acknowledge the concerns of those who disagree with you. Proverbs 28, verse 16, calls bad leaders cruel oppressors, which describes your treatment of special needs children. They cannot learn virtually and need therapeutic treatments that cannot be given on a computer. You simply ignore their needs. Lastly, Proverbs 31, verse 5, says bad leaders pervert the rights of the afflicted, which again goes to your blatant refusal to consider the needs of St. Louis County's children. Coronavirus is not the only thing that can harm our kids. Your insistence on running for re-election for a position you are so uniquely ill-equipped for is the definition of raw power seeking. And so at dinner tables across, across the county, parents use your misguided actions like forcing public schools to open only to virtual learning as examples of how not to lead. It is my sincere wish that you would either improve your management of the entire county or go back to being a full-time anesthesiologist. In any case, we will continue to pray for you to become a better leader as long as you occupy that office. The following from Nick Moran. <clears throat> Excuse me. I urge you to end the draconian measures and mandates Sam Page has in place in response to COVID-19. He has tasted power and is now enjoying it absolutely. The mask mandate and strain on businesses will have a long-lasting effect that isn't being considered. We should trust individuals to do what they feel is safe for them and their family. Bring back freedom and choice. Bring back common sense. The following from Karen, Carolyn Rodefeld. Cancel the state of emergency and the fa face mask mandate. Allow businesses and churches to operate at their discretion. The following from Abigail Adele. I'm writing about the proposal for the veterinarian position at the St. Louis County Animal Care and Control Center. County Executive Dr. Sam Page proposed that Dr. Philip Wagenknecht take the position but I, as a shelter volunteer, ask you to oppose this. Dr. Wegenek has had his veterinary license suspended not once, not just once, but twice. During his time at the ACNC in 2018, there was an unusually high record of complications in routine spay and neuter surgeries. Many of his surgeries were botched, causing pain to the animals and requiring additional expensive treatment. Currently, Dr. Wagonet is involved in two lawsuits, one of which is for wrongful euthanasia at the ACNC. It's no wonder that the, among shelter staff and volunteers, he has earned the monikers Dr. Death and the Butcher. I'd also like to point out the close ties to Dr. Wagonet and the current director of ACNC, Dr. Vanessa Duras, Dr. Duras' husband, Dr. Adam Duras, purchased Dr. Wagonet's former veterinary practice, St. Louis, St. Louis Veterinary Center. It calls into question the legitimacy of the nomination. 
The legitimacy is further questioned when it is noted that Dr. Wagner is the only person to reply to the request for proposal. It's hard to believe that he, is the only, he was the only candidate who replied to the offer, especially when it's reported that shelter staff weren't informed of the RFP. Many more qualified applicants should have been contacted and considered. Taxpayers in St. Louis County expect the highest possible care for animals at their shelter. Hiring an incompetent veterinarian who is in his 70s and should be retired, who has had his license suspended, and who is involved in multiple lawsuits should never have been considered an option. Providing some subpar care will cost taxpayers more in veterinary medical bills and more potential lawsuits will add to those costs. The citizens of St. Louis County deserve the best use of county resources and accepting Dr. Sam Page's proposal to hire Dr. Wagenknecht is an enormous waste of, waste of those resources. Please oppose this questionable proposal and fill the fill the position with a more qualified candidate so the constituents of St. Louis County are assured of the best care for their sheltered animals and the best use of their tax dollars. Thank you for your time. Uh, Abigail Adele. The following from Kate Stratton. St. Louis County residents are tired of being lied to by the corrupt Democrats who have held the county executive and interim county executive role for the last six years. From Steve Stinger, who is now in jail, to Sam Page, who is lying constantly that you care. You were not even present during the last county council meeting, which is a Zoom meeting. There is no excuse for missing, especially since you keep saying we are in a crisis. From an article in the, from a, excuse me, from an article from the International Business Times. The CDC up, updated the provisional counts on deaths that have, occur, have occurred from COVID-19 on August 26th. And in the so, section on comorbidities, which is the simultaneous presence of two or more diseases or medical conditions in a patient, revealed that only 6% of deaths were caused solely from just the COVID-19 virus. That information has been seized on by those who believe that the total deaths and the severity of the, of the pandemic have been greatly exaggerated as an effort to undermine the president during an election year. According to the New York Times, potentially 90% of those who have tested positive for COVID-19 have such insignificant amounts of the virus present in their bodies that such individuals do not need to isolate, nor are they candidates for contact tracing. Leading public health experts who aren't Leading public health experts are now concerned that overtesting is responsible for misdiagnosing a huge number of people with harmless amounts of the virus in their systems. Is this what's being done in St. Louis County, Sam Page? Have figures been inflated because it's an election year? Are you using $2.2 million of CARES money to bribe people with $50 gift cards to overtest so you can keep hiring contact tracers and keep us locked down and ruin St. Louis County. What's going on? We need the truth and we need St. Louis County to be fully open from businesses to churches to schools. The truth will prevail. I can't wait for November 3rd to get an elected county executive like Paul Barry who will care for St. Louis County. Sincerely, Kate Stratton. From Angela Evans, Dr. Page. On 8-11-2020, I received a call that no parent ever wants to receive. I was, in so I was informed that my son had died. I wasn't given the opportunity to identify him or hold him one last time because of the possibility that he may have had COVID at the time of his death. He did not. Both SLU Hospital and the medical examiner's office denied me this opportunity. I would gladly have quarantined myself for the suggested time period if, if I would have had this opportunity. My grief was worsened by this unfortunate circumstances. I am asking that you would revisit this rule and allow people to be with their loved ones after they've died. I kindly thank you for your consideration. A heartbroken mother, Angela Evans. Evidence emerges from the CDC. Oh, I'm okay. Sorry. 
uh, regarding the innocuousness of the COVID-19 virus, what measures are put in place to reduce or remove the mandates set on business and residences? Every day, it is becoming more and more evident that this virus is no deadlier than the common flu. Besides the number of cases, please present further evidence for your mandates, such as death rates and demographics. At the very least, please remove the mandates to allow those who do not feel threatened by this virus to continue living their lives as they see fit, as any free society would do. Those who are afraid still have the option to wear a mask, utilize delivery, and curbside pickup as options. Please do not continue to, dis to discriminate against the majority of those with which this virus has little to, to know, little to do, I'm sorry, which this virus has little to no additional impact than contracting the common flu. From Sarah Barnard, I am asking you to please move on to phase three for sports in the county. The private schools have been open almost two weeks and there haven't been any large spikes in cases. The infection rate is under one. Sports that are played outdoors are low risk, and they are beneficial for children mentally and emotionally. From Felicity Buckley, I'm writing to request COVID mandates be terminated. With 99.9% .9 of the population not dying from COVID, I'm requesting the county executive goes on record with exactly what numbers data he is looking for before the mandates are voluntary. If we are waiting for a vaccine, I would like to know for the record if the county executive supports the vaccine be mandatory. From Julia Jansma, I am emailing you all to request that you put an end to the ridiculous countywide mandate to wear masks and put an end to the social distancing orders. We are adults here and can decide for ourselves how to best care for ourselves and our families. It is the government's job to protect our rights, not our health. If the government was so concerned about health, they would understand the illogical mask ma mandate only creates a weakened immune system, and I will not comply. Our children are suffering the most, and suicide rates for both adults and children are alarming. Anxiety and depression are at an all-time high. This is because of your mandates that you have put upon us in the county. Remote learning is a fiasco for so many. It is not the gold standard in learning. Children need to be in school to learn with their peers in which there is next zero chance of corona transmission. You've made their lives miserable, dictating how they are to eat with masks on. You change the rules midday anytime you see fit with zero data to back any of your mandates. You've taken their sports and activities away. You are punishing our children and taking every aspect of their lives that is good away. Our businesses are suffering greatly and many are dying. You are destroying our economy. I can no longer go in any business in St. Louis nor go to the grocery store to get food for my family because of your mandates and threats to businesses. I will not support businesses that require a muzzle to enter. Businesses and schools both are forced to violate ADA because of urological threats. We are demanding you to lift all mandates today and allow St. Louis and its children and economy to heal from the hardships these mandates have caused. More and more people are going to leave the city and the county because of these draconian measures of control of the population. End the mandates now, please. Kimberly Stevens, for five months now, the residents of St. Louis County have sat back and watched as unelected interim county executive Sam Page has shut down our schools, businesses, churches, and youth sports. We were told that this complete shutdown was imperative in order to flatten the curve of COVID-19. Finally, after months of staying home, businesses, churches, and sports were allowed to slowly reopen. However, the past two months have shown us that Interim County Executive Page is more interested in control than he is the residents of St. Louis County. Without any statistical data to back him up, Interim Page has continued to move youth sports back and forth between phases. It is obvious that his decisions are based strictly on his own personal whims. 
Last month, we were forced to sit back and watch as Interim Page used his position to bully school districts into virtual learning. Last spring, I watched as my children, both of whom are A students, struggled to try and adapt to online learning. I watched as they completed every assignment given to them, yet learned nothing. I listened to them cry because they missed their teachers and friends. Just two weeks before school was set to start, I was forced to tell them that there wouldn't be any in-person school. I was forced to try and help them wrap their heads around another quarter or more of virtual learning. I tried to be positive for them, explaining that whatever happened, we would make the best of it. Yet I was left with nothing to say when my high school junior said to me, there's nothing to make the best of mom because there's just nothing anymore. For the past five months, I have written countless emails to my state representative and senator. I have called our governor's office weekly to the point that they now recognize my voice when I begin to speak. As residents of St. Louis County, we should be embarrassed at the fact that each and every time I call the governor's staff states that they answer countless calls each day complaining about interim county executive page. The following from Tom Sullivan. <clears throat> Excuse me. First of all, I would like to report that the county auditor has finally met a sunshine request that I made on June 5th. Just yesterday, in a two-sentence response, he said he had no documents I was requesting. That took nearly three months. The county executive's office finally moved on a sunshine request from last month. That only took about two weeks. In both cases, complaints had to be filed with the attorney general's office to get action. So much for the transparency and open government that was promised. <clears throat> Excuse me. As convoluted as today's meeting of the council's Justice, Health, and Welfare Committee was, it did a good job of laying out the problems that are going on with the county jail. This is something the council and the public need to know, and it is obvious there is much work to be done. I would hope the council would ignore some of the advice the county councilor is providing. She seems more interested in keeping things covered up. Contrary to what she says, the council can look into any area it cares to, and whether there is some future investigation that might take place has no effect on the council. On today's agenda, County Executive Page is asking for $200,000 for a two-year contract for veterinarian services at the County Animal Shelter. As I have already brought to the attention of the Council, there are many questions about the proposed contract. For one thing, it should be a concern that there was only one response to the RFP. This is a very big red flag. Of greater concern, the doctor for whom the contract is proposed, Dr. Philip Wagonect, works for St. Louis Veterinary Center. The lead veterinarian and medical officer for the center is Dr. Adam Duras. He might also have an ownership position in the center. Dr. Adam Duras's wife, Dr. Vanessa Duras, is the county director of the county's animal care and control. When Spring Schmidt, the acting co-director of county's health department, made the request for the contract to the county executive, she had to know this. It seems the county executive's office did not give the request even minimal scrutiny and this contract should be rejected for obvious reasons. Thank you for listening to my comments. <clears throat> the following from Kara Braxton. I'm a 12 year plus employee of Justice Services. On 826, I became concerned about my safety. However, as of 828, my concerns were validated. I'm in constant fear for my safety, emotional health, and security of my job. My door was marked with a witchcraft symbol, which a coworker noticed. I contacted Clayton Police because it was a threat against my person. After contacting Cl Clayton Police, I was pulled into Tina Maloney's office by Interim Director Darby Howard and verbally reprimanded for over five minutes for not informing him that I was calling the police. It was on my off day. The police said I had to be there. Darby was made aware of my presence by the St. Louis County Police Department Sergeant McCartney supervisor. Mr. Howard not one time inquired of my welfare nor my story until after I stated, Darby, what bothers me, excuse me, this is in quotes, Darby, what bothers me 
as well is that you have not one time asked me if I'm okay, nor what happened, in quotes. He then argued with me disingenuously and asked if I was okay. I told him that I felt I was being targeted because of the anonymous letter that I received, along with a lot of other people. Also that I knew my computer had been searched by personnel, per personnel across the street, to see if I had sent it from work, and that he knew that the information as well. This letter is the only thing that Darby seemed to care about. He only had questions about the letter. He also stated how Justice Services' dirty laundry was being aired. He just wanted to be he just wanted to put what happened behind happened to me behind us and move forward. I say me because the only thing he was clear that he wanted investigated was the author of the letter. In speaking with Tina Maloney today, we checked on each other's be each other's well-being. She told me that Darby Howard stated to her that what's going to happen right now is significantly my fault for sending an email of that letter, period. He said they got the letter. That was when the petition against the last director was done. This just goes to prove that the letter that Brittany Jones is absolutely true, and now the original doors were marked Raul, Tina Maloney, and myself were targets of the so-called family. Julia Childry Murphy's presence in interim Howard's office is constant, so who is really the interim director? Madam Chair, I end that because that exceeds 400 words. There's a statement attached to it. We'll enter it into the record. The following is from Joseph Patton. I'm emailing you to, today to con express my concern over the shutdown of high school football in St. Louis County. Mr. Page, I'm a resident of St. Louis County. However, not for long as your tyrant decision-making is out of control. I'm a high school teacher and football coach in a major school in St. Charles. Last Friday, we had our first Friday Night Lights football game of the season. While just a few miles away, the St. Louis kids were sitting at home because of your terrible leadership and decision-making. Mr. Page, you are single-handedly ruining these high school athletes' dreams and hopes and, and hopes excuse me, and hopes all for a virus with a survival rate of 99%. You're causing more harm to these kids by not allowing them to compete. Open up high school football, these kids only get one chance at a high school experience, and you're ruining that for them. Thank you for your time. Madam Chair, that concludes the public forum. Thank you, Chris, and thank you, Diane. We will proceed with introduction of bills. Bill number 196, introduced by Council Member Days, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to execute a fuel sales contract and up to three subsequent renewals with the City of Moline Acres, Missouri. Bill number 197, introduced by Council Member Days, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to execute an automotive and equipment repair contract and up to three subsequent renewals with the City of Moline Acres, Missouri. Bill number 198, introduced by Council Member Clancy, an ordinance amending Chapter 107, Title I, St. Louis County Revised Ordinance 1974 as amended, purchasing by repealing and reenacting Section 107.401 pertaining to application of Cone of Silence. Bill number 199, introduced by Council Member Trachis, an ordinance declaring the public necessity of and providing for the replacement of bridge number 419, widening and establishing of a section of public road designated as Bayless Avenue, lying wholly within unincorporated St. Louis County, Missouri, directing the acquisition of real property, therefore, and authorizing the county executive to execute contracts, agreements, and related documents AR-1686. Bill number 200, introduced by Council Member Harder, an ordinance declaring the public necessity of and providing for the replacement of the new Baldwin Road Bridge number 349, lying wholly within unincorporated St. Louis County, Missouri, directing the acquisition of real property, therefore, and authorizing the county executive to execute contracts, agreements, and related documents, CR-1773. Bill number 201, introduced by Council Member Clancy, 
an ordinance authorizing the county executive to execute a maintenance agreement with the city of Brentwood, Missouri for construction and maintenance of improvements associated with the Brentwood Deer Creek Greenway Connector Project located within county right-of-way of Brentwood Boulevard. Bill number 202 introduced by Council Member Clancy, an ordinance amending chapter 1105 St. Louis County Revised Ordinance 1974 as amended Department of Transportation by repealing and reenacting section 1105.060 pertaining to special use fees. Bill number 203, introduced by Council Member Clancy, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to execute a franchise agreement with American Fibercom LLC, DBA Arch Fiber for placement of network resource infrastructure fiber optic lines and countywide right of way. Bill number 204, introduced by Council Member Clancy, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to execute a contract and one renewal with Metropolitan Tickets, Inc., DBA Metro Tix for ticket sales services for the Winter Wonderland event. Madam Chair, those are the bills. Thank you. We will move on to perfection. Bill number 20, introduced by Council Member Harder. Please hold bill number 20. Bill number 20 is held. Bill number 32, introduced by Council Member Trakis. Um, okay. Please hold bill number 32. Thank bill you. number 32 is held. Bill number 175, introduced by Council Members Fitch and Harder. Please hold bill 175. Bill 175 is held. Bill number 176, introduced by Council Members Fitch and Harder. Please hold Bill 176. Bill 176 is held. Bill number 191, introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move to perfect Bill number 191. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries, bill number 191 is perfected. Bill number 192, introduced by Council Member Clancy. Madam Chair, we have a substitute bill. Please read the substitute bill. Substitute bill number one for bill number 192, introduced by Council Member Clancy, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to accept a grant of up to $83,850 from the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services, appropriating the same for support of the Department of Public Health's perinatal hepatitis B case management project and authorizing the acting director of the Department of Public Health to execute necessary documents. Um, so this substitute bill reflects an increase in the grant amount from $80,000, which was the original amount um, up to just over $83,000. Um, I move for adoption of substitute bill number one for bill number 192. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries substitute bill number one for bill number 192 is adopted. Um, I move to perfect substitute bill number one for bill number 192. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any Pardon opposed? Uh, was there, Diane, Madam did you? Chair, I did not yeah. hear a second. Okay. Second, days. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries substitute bill number one for bill number 192 is perfected. And I'm getting a little background noise, so I would remind everyone to please mute yourself unless it's your unless it's your turn to speak. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving along, bill number 193 introduced by council member Days. I move to perfect, perfect bill number 193. You. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Motion carries. Bill number 193 is perfected. Bill number 194 introduced by Council Member Trakas for Council Member Harder. I move to perfect bill number 194. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 194 is perfected. Bill number 195 introduced by Council Member Trakas for Council Member Harder. I move to perfect bill number 195. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 195 is perfected. Uh, moving on to final passage. Bill number 320 introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move to hold bill number 320. Bill number 320 is held. Substitute bill number two for bill number 385 introduced by Council Member Dunaway. I move to hold substitute bill number two for bill number 385. Substitute bill number two for bill number 385 is held. Bill number 14 introduced by Council Members Trachis, Days, Dunaway, Fitch, Walton Gray, Clancy, and Harder. Move to hold bill number 14, please. Bill number 14 is held. Bill number 76 introduced by Council Members Dunaway and Harder. Please hold bill number 76. Bill number 76 is held. Bill number 189 introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move for final passage of bill number 189. Second, Gray. Second. Roll call. I believe we got a second from Councilwoman Gray. Yeah, Roll call, yes, please. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trachis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill number 189, there are seven ayes. Uh, bill number 189 is finally passed. Bill number 190, introduced by Council Member Clancy. I move for final passage of Bill number 190. Second. Second. Roll call. Council Member Days. Aye. Council Member Dunaway. Aye. Council Member Fitch. Aye. Council Member Gray. Aye. Council Member Clancy. Aye. Council Member Trakis. Aye. Council Member Harder. Aye. Madam Chair, on Bill Number 190, there are seven ayes. Bill Number 190 is finally passed. Moving on to resolutions. Madam Chair, we have no resolutions this evening, so we'll move to unfinished business. Under unfinished business, item number one. Hold on the order of business, and that will be the order. Item number two. Um, we had a committee of the whole today, and there was a recommendation from the committee to go ahead and vote on these appointments this evening. Um, I make a motion that the appointments be approved as recommended. Second. Carter. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Motion carries. Item number three. Um, we will hold this on the order of business and that will be the order. Moving on to new business, we have one prepared order this evening. Order number one is in the matter of the agenda for the regular meeting of the County Council scheduled for September 8th, 2020. I move for the adoption of order number one. Second days. All in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Order number one is adopted. 
Um, that brings us to the end of our agenda. Any comments from the council? I am hearing none. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. This meeting is adjourned. Have a good evening, everybody. Good night. Bye.